Welcome back to the Roman Smile watercolour swatching series in which we swatch out the entire 140 colour range. This is episode 5 and we are going to be looking at the yellow greens and the ochres in this video. So let's get swatching. First up we have the thalo green blue shade which is made of PG7. Cobalt Green Light, PG50. Permanent Green Light, PY154 and PG7. Sap Green, PY150 and PG7. Hooker's Green, PY150 and PB27. Aquarius Green, PY150, PBR25 and PB29. Olive Green Light which is made out of a very long list of PB29, PY129, PY150 and PBR25. Deep Green Gold, PY129. Green Gold, PY150, PY129 and PG36. Olive Green Deep, PY150, PBK9, PG17 and PBR25. Naples Yellow Light, PW4, 
PY53 and PBR24. Transparent Gold Ochre, PY43. Venetian Yellow Earth, PY43. Natural Sienna Light PY forty three Gold Ochre PY forty three Yellow Ochre PY43 Naples Yellow Deep PBR twenty four Veronese Yellow Earth PY forty three Natural Siena Monte Amiata PBR7 And finally, we have the Italian Raw Siena, which is made of PBR7. Welcome back. The paints have dried and we have the rest of the greens and the yellow ochres. And this is an overall impression of the brand. One of the things I have noticed is that Roma Schmal has a quite limited number of greens. I kind of wish that they had a little bit more greens in their range, but who knows, they might bring out more greens. Roma Schmal himself have told me that they are bringing new colors out for 2020. So I'm hoping that at least one of those is gonna be a green. However, the greens they have are beautiful. We have the Thalo Green Blue Shade, which is a spot on Thalo Green Blue Shade. And it is beautiful, it's deep, it has a wide range of values, 
perfect spot on. Cobalt green light doesn't have as strong a granulation as the cobalt turquoise that we saw in the last episode. It is a lot more finer, more even granulation. However, if you do paint a lot of plants, then this is a nice color to have on your palette. After that, we have the permanent green light. I think this is comparable to Daniel Smith's May Green. It is a nice, bright, even color. And this will be perfect if you do do a lot of plant illustrations because not a lot of plants are this color in particular in nature, but when you're doing illustrations, you can turn up the colors a little bit more and this will be a great one to have on your palette. Then we have Sap Green and Hooker's Green. I have to say the Hooker's Green is a little bit more muted and darker. Oh, let's get closer into it. Sorry about that. I got so excited about these colors. I got talking before I zoomed in for you guys. The Sap Green is definitely as expected. The Hooker's Green, I think is a little bit more muted than I was expecting. And if I were to pick one color that wasn't quite what I was expecting, according to the name, it will be the Hooker's Green. But that could be just what I'm used to using the Holbein one. That's the color I was expecting. It's not, but that doesn't mean that it's not a useful color. It is a beautiful, beautiful and muted dark green. If you do a lot of landscape paintings, this would go much better on your palette than any of these colors because greens are a little bit more muted in real life. And I think the Hooker's Green of Roman Smell would be a easier place to start mixing your greens with rather than these really bright colors. Then, of course, we have the Aquarius Green. I think I've raved on enough about Aquarius Green, both in my Vlogmas when I swatched it for the first time and then again when I did my top 10. It was definitely in the top 10 of the all these colors I swatched in Vlogmas. It is a stunning color. It's incredibly unique. If you're gonna get just one color from Romish Mall, I want you to get the Aquarius Green because it is so much fun and it is so expressive. It is a mix of a PY150, PBR25 and PB29. And that ultramarine PB29 granulates and separates from the PY150 and PBR25. So beautiful wide range of colors huge range of value because aquarius green goes really really dark on the mass stone but when you water it down these two tone shades oh I, I could rave about this color forever however that will be a very long video so i am going to move on but please 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 if you're only going to get one color get this one then we have the olive green light which is another unique color mix by Romy Schmal. he said that this blend of colors is unique to him and it does create a olive green that is granulating and it has more depth however you don't get the color separation like you get in the aquarius green the colors have been definitely blended more smoothly on the olive green so you don't have to worry about the two-tone effect when you're not looking for that two-tone effect in the olive green light also, because of the PY 150, when you water down the olive green light, it creates a very strong swatch of color. So if you are looking for a brightness in your olive green light, then this is a good option for you. Then we have the deep green gold and the green gold. And I have to say, this is a bit like the ultramarine blue and the ultramarine blue light very very small small differences i think the green gold has a little bit more glow to it because it has that py150 so if you are looking for a brighter green gold then go for this one this one is a little bit more muted it's like a lighter version of olive green light so it's like olive green light light or i can't believe it's not olive green light light i don't know <laughs> these two definitely go really well together however if you are picky about single pigment colors then this is obviously the option to go for because this is a single pigment color whereas the green gold has three colors blended personally i would go for the green gold because i'm not bothered about the single pigment thing i'm perfectly happy to use mixed your blend of colors i don't believe in this myth that multiple pigment colors create mud when you mix it with other colors Mixing it with colors that are closer to its complementary color is what creates the mud colors in the first place. They, they are no surprise, it's just a one color. And this is the brighter one because of the PY150. So I personally, being the color whore that I am in terms of 
going for bright colors i would go for the green gold then we have olive green deep which is a companion to the olive green light between these two i definitely prefer the olive green light however if you are looking for a more brownier version of olive color then this is definitely the one to go for and if you do do a lot of plant illustrations then this will be a good color to have as i've seen lots of illustrators use this color and it's nice to not have to mix every single color every single time it's to me I think it's great to have convenience colors because it just cuts down on your work then we have the naples yellow light it's a spot on naples yellow light it's what i expect then we have all the raw colors the transparent gold ochre the venetian yellow earth the natural sienna light gold ochre yellow ochre naples yellow deep veronese yellow earth natural sienna monte amiata italian raw sienna i would say that the transparent gold ochre and the top line is definitely the yellow ochre options and then the bottom row is more of the raw sienna options and which one of these you pick because there are so much options is i think purely depending on what you're looking for the transparent gold ochre is great if you're looking for that transparency venetian 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 yellow earth is definitely great if you're looking for that light touch of yellow ochre whereas when you're looking for a more heavy-handed and bolder yellow ochres then go for the gold ochre or the yellow ochre one of the things i want to talk to you about with the neutral paints of the roman schmal colors is that all the colors in this brand is easy to re-wet and so this is not talking about re-wettability however i did find that with the more neutral colors that the colors were more thirsty and by that what i mean is when i come to create a certain amount of a liquidy dissolved re-wetted color and put it on my brush i definitely found that i had to make more mixtures of the liquid color to put on my brush before i go on the paper otherwise the brush felt pretty dry so you just need to add more water when you are re-wetting the color than the brighter colors however as i said it's not a matter of re-wettability it just it needs more water rather than more time to re-dissolve -re and become fluid so that was the rest of the greens and the yellow ochre and raw sienna colors of the roman smile range so what did you think of these colors was there any color that took your fancy particularly or colors that you are definitely going to be committed to buying as i said my favorite out of all of this is the crest green i think it's an incredibly special color that no other brand has and i highly highly recommend aquarius green to anybody that's into the more expressive two-tone granulating colors and as i said in two videos ago the aquarius green goes great with mineral violet i've painted with these two and just these two and created some really really interesting paintings so yeah definitely go for the aquarius green if you do fancy getting the aquarius green i will leave links down below to all of the colors and where you can get them I will put the high red scans of this spread over on my Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash Otacano. Again, massive thanks to Roman Smile. I am so sorry I still can't get hang of how to pronounce your name. It's just the dyslexia. It is creating a huge mind block in my head and I've been trying so hard and you guys have been so, so helpful in trying to get me to pronounce it right. I hugely apologize. I've tried my hardest. This is the best I can do next week we are going to be looking at the red browns of the range so do look forward to that next week on thursday thank you so much for watching this video and i will see you in the next video bye